Welcome to another episode of the Homeland Security Training Institute podcast. That's the HSTI podcast. I'm your host, Tom Brady, the Associate Dean for the Homeland Security Training Institute here at the College of DuPage. And as you know, every episode we try to talk about an aspect of Homeland Security, law enforcement, public safety, emergency management, to try to uh, incorporate what's going on in the in the world right now, and also to talk about how citizens can be better prepared uh, in the event of a uh, of a of a situation, uh, a, a critical incident, things like that. So, what we try to do every week is we try to uh, talk about different things, and I'm really excited about today's show because today we have a, a good friend, uh, Chief Jim Kruger of the Oak Brook. Illinois Police Department is with us today, and Chief Kruger has been a great friend and a great supporter of our Suburban Law Enforcement Academy here at the College of DuPage. And I'll first start off by saying, welcome, Chief. Well, thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. I am really excited to be here today. And as you know, I am a big supporter of COD and and the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy, so I'm uh, very happy to be here. Well, it's always nice to talk to you. And again, we, we do appreciate your support. You know, let's talk a little bit about, about law enforcement. You know, law enforcement has been, been making the news, but let's start off by talking a little bit about, you know, your career in law enforcement. So, Chief, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, a background on your career in law enforcement, when it started, and how long you've been a chief in, in Oak Brook? Sure. I've, uh, you know, this has always been my life uh, long dream to be involved in law enforcement and be a police officer. I uh, first got involved, actually first became a sworn officer uh, out of state, actually in the state of Louisiana, where I could start my career at 18 years of age. That seems very young today, especially as I look at 18-year-olds today. Uh, okay. Hard to believe that uh, right out of high school, I was uh, went to the academy and was carrying a firearm and uh, was a police officer that young. But it's the only thing I ever wanted to do. And uh, so uh, I was down there for a couple years and then... Uh, our family decided we'd move back to Illinois, where we were from, and actually uh, grew up in Chicago, and uh, got on a police department, actually got on the Carpentersville Police Department, and spent uh, the bulk of my on-street career there, uh, leaving in 2004 as a commander, and then uh, started my career as a police chief. And uh, for nearly 13 years now, I've been a chief of police, and uh, and I'm uh, blessed to have been uh, chosen to be a chief three times, and uh, in my current position as chief of police in Oak Brook. I was uh, appointed in November of 2011. That's a really impressive career. So what other departments have you been chief of? Well, I was uh, the chief of police in Roselle, Illinois, another DuPage County community, of course, uh, for about five and a half years prior to coming to Oak Brook. And uh, my first chief position was in uh, Winfield for two years. So uh, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, most of my uh, law enforcement street career was in Kane County, but the entire time I've been a police chief has been in DuPage County. That's that's really interesting. And Chief, I got to ask you because you mentioned uh, you grew up in Chicago. What where did you grow up in Chicago? I'm a North Sider, so around the Cicero and Belmont area, oh, and yeah. then uh, our family moved out to uh, River Grove, which is basically just the border of the city. We're a block away. I know exactly where that is. I grew up on the Northwest Side around Harlem and Addison, so we're we're not we're there that far that far from each other. No, that that's fantastic. So you mentioned that you always had a desire to become a police officer. Can Chief, can you talk a little bit about how, how that started and, and, and really what, what drove you to become a police officer? Well, I think I saw it growing up in Chicago, and uh, uh, I think, you know, some of the people that I saw, the officers I saw working and, uh, you know, making an impact in people's lives. And, uh, and I think it, that drew me to it and, uh, you know, being that person that uh, uh, can provide that safety and uh, – you know, without being too cliche about it, uh, as far as the, the helping people issue that uh, a lot of uh, young people, I'm sure some of the uh, young men and women we've got over at Salia starting this week uh, would say some, something similar. But uh, it's uh, just something that's always been inside of me. And uh, ever since uh, I was single digits, really, <laughs> it's, uh, it's something I've always wanted to do. Well, I, as long as I've, I know, I've known you, you, you certainly have... have You've always been a great person. I know you have made a difference. You've had a long, successful career in law enforcement. So, so thank you for that, Chief. So, let's talk a little bit about the job and 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 what you've seen in terms of changes. Uh, so, you know, for you, what's changed the most about the job since you first became a police officer? Well, when I first got into, uh, first became a sworn officer, I think uh, you know one of the things that certainly changed uh, on an individual basis or a personal basis has been. The level of education and training 
that uh, is required today as compared to 35, 40 years ago. Certainly there wasn't really a, a requirement or understanding that uh, a police officer necessarily needed a college degree in the beginning. But uh, I'm uh, a big supporter of higher education and uh, had gone back and uh, got my undergrad and my graduate degrees while I was a working police officer. And uh, I think for the most part now, most officers we have that uh, come into the profession already have a degree. And I think that's vitally important. Certainly it's become more technical today. Uh, you know, and, and how we analyze data and how we deploy resources as compared to years ago. And uh, there's a lot of different responsibilities today, you know, when we talk about homeland security specifically, and uh, something that I know is uh, near and dear here that uh, is uh, vitally important that wasn't even talked about 35 years ago. So, I, I you know, I think looking at everything in totality, the, uh, uh, you know, there has been some, uh, the job has become more technical, uh, certainly, the other thing that I think is that's changed over the over the these last at least the last decade or so, is really the evolution of problem-oriented policing and community-oriented policing that was just starting to scratch the surface in the late 70s when I first started, and uh, and certainly now I think it's it's an expectation of uh, every police officer in every community to have those relationships. I think it's vitally important, as you said. And, you know, one thing, Chief, you mentioned is that, that training has is, is become so important. Tell me a little bit about how important training is to you and, and the officers in the Oak Brook Police Department. And, and, and what, what do you think is the best type of training at, right now for officers to receive? Well, we take training very, very seriously. I make sure that it's a uh, integral part of our annual report that shows the level of training and the number of hours that every officer in the department has. Uh, certainly, there are a lot of requisites now that have been put on by state statute over the last year or two as well as far as the different requirements and procedural justice and cultural competency and and legal aspects and those kind of things i think there's there's really kind of two prongs if you look at it when you talk about training certainly there's those those hard skills or those operational skills that are that are always necessary you know the uh, the use of force and uh, arrest techniques and and uh, understanding uh, probable cause and the, and the statutes and, and c- those kind of things. But I also think that there's, some, there's training that's always needed on the, some of the soft skills, too, as far as de-escalation, uh, how you relate to people. Uh, certainly one of the big things that, that we're pushing and uh, has been very important in our industry in the last couple of years is uh, CIT training, so that we all our officers are aware of uh, how to approach uh, those uh, people that may be having some kind of mental crisis and realizing that how we react to them may change the outcome. And certainly we need to look at that. Uh, and certainly that's a big change in our profession over the last few couple of decades as well. I think it's a, it's a, it's a huge change. Uh, and society is, is, is obviously, as you mentioned, so different now. And you mentioned CIT. For those uh, that are listening, that's crisis intervention team training. And as the chief said, that, that's, that's really important because it, it teaches uh, police officers how to deal with and how to identify people with, with uh, a mental illness where when you first came in, Chief, they probably didn't have anything like that. No. Well, I think, you know, certainly there were hospitalization rates were at a very different time back then as well. And, uh, and I think law enforcement was focused more on traditional methods. You know, you came, you went to a call, you made an arrest, you incarcerated somebody and you went back out on the street and you went to the next call. And I think over time we realize that, especially uh, when we look at, you know, returning to a certain address all the time, or are we solving the problems, or are we changing the way uh, a, a certain community uh, uh, is concerned about issues within, with, you know, right on your own block? You know, th- there's a better way to resolve those issues, and if we can get to root cause analysis and see just what is causing the problem, so. It, it makes for a better community, and it also makes us more efficient because we're not going back to the same address all the time. Very well said, Chief. Chief, how large is the, uh, the Oak Brook Police Department? How many officers? Well, we have 40 full-time sworn officers. I have a contingent of 10 uh, part-time or auxiliary police officers, and then we have uh, nine uh, civilian employees. Uh, j- a few years back, of course, we consolidated with uh, many other um, DuPage County towns and, and don't operate our own co- communication center anymore, and we're part of DUCOM, so that, that took away a little bit from our staffing. Sure. So i got to ask you, Chief, you know, you've been 
the chief of Oakbrook for for several years now. I, I, you've been on the job and and doing a great job. So tell me what you think the most satisfying thing is about being the police chief in Oakbrook. Well, one of the things, and now after uh, nearly five and a half years that uh, that have just been uh, a tremendous opportunity for me is that uh, Oakbrook is a very unique community because of the the large corporate uh, population that we have uh, with all the businesses, the retail, and that really is about 80 percent of our of our business, uh, where we have a relatively small residential population, uh, and uh, so that has really uh, given the opportunity to work with some of these major corporations and. Uh, uh, you know, work with some of their internal training issues or maybe with some of their concerns that they have. So uh, there's been things that, uh, that we've been able to do and, and, and working with some folks and that uh, have been very unique and very rewarding there as compared to some of the other positions I've had. Sure. On the flip side to that, Chief, what, what's the most challenging thing about being the police chief in Oak Brook? I, I can imagine you have, a, you have a lot of responsibilities and a lot of different things that you have to do as the chief. So what do you think are the most the, the things that you see are most challenging in, from your perspective as, from being the police chief in Oak Brook? Well, one thing is, is we do have a significant influx of people on a daily basis uh, and some things that, uh, you know, from a homeland security issue, you know, could be uh, – a target-rich environment, and we always have to be mindful of that. Uh, we've been uh, very upfront about uh, training for those kind of things, working with our corporate partners and their security operations, uh, but also, uh, you know, planning, uh, you know, as things have occurred throughout the country on s- some of the issues, whether in a corporate environment or in a large-scale retail environment. We're very aware of that, and and we tailor our training towards those things. So. That's sometimes some of the things that uh, that can keep a police chief up at night too. I can I can certainly understand that. You know, when, certainly uh, Oak Brook is, is is rich in you know soft targets, and we've seen over the past you know few, couple of years soft targets are something that's been focused on. So I would imagine that where you have the the Oak Brook Center Mall and places like that, um, you have to really do some due diligence and, and and partner up to be able to to keep those places safe. Yeah, and I'm very pleased that we have uh, tremendous relationships with. Uh, with the mall, with uh, some of our other large-scale corporate uh, uh, partners, and uh, it's that's been uh, wonderful too. Because as when you first come into a community as a new chief, you you often wonder on, you know, how receptive they are to law enforcement. You know, sometimes some of these corporations can be very closed-minded and not want any participation. But I haven't found that to be the case at all. They've been wonderful partners, and it, so it's worked out very well. So the the corporate side, you have great relationships. I think that's that's a hugely important because, as you said, you're it, it's a rich environment for for corporations. Talk to me about how the Oak Brook Police Department's the police department works with the citizens in Oak Brook, and what's your relationship with the citizens who actually live in Oak Brook? Well, that's been uh, another uh, phenomenal piece and and just a wonderful uh, part of being the police chief there. Uh, one of the things that the, our department has been able to do and really sustain even during some of the tougher economic times in the 2008, 2009, and 10 period is we've always had a a lot of programming, uh, including we still uh, support the D.A.R.E. program and are out in our schools. Uh, We uh, maintain a Citizens Police Academy and have a great response for that, and uh, that's uh, for the last five years. Uh, So we've done a lot with uh, interacting with our community. We have a a tremendous amount of support, and it's uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, what we're able to do too is is that we try to be fairly nimble, uh, where when we have a request come in from the residents that uh, may be interested in us having a particular program, uh, we just had some residents uh, uh, several months ago. We're looking for some type of firearm safety class, not a shooting type class, but more a handling and storage, and you know what if. Uh, you know, a weapon is found in the home and, the you know, the the custodian of that weapon isn't around. You know, what, what do they do with it? And uh, so uh, so we provided that training and, uh, you know, had a nice little uh, just an evening seminar type thing. So, uh, so I think the community knows that we're very responsive to their needs. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed to have a, a team of people that are, that are, uh, that want to do that and uh, 
do a wonderful job out in the community and develop these relationships. And uh, that's the one thing that's a little different from in Oak Brook as compared to some other communities as well. We have this large uh, commercial footprint, yet we have the small town pr- footprint uh, of, our, of our residential population. So it's we still have those small town things that we do. And uh, what's nice is that we have the, so the staffing and the resources of a larger community because of that commercial population. But but we're able to, so we're able to provide our residents with a very, very high level of service. Well, just when you think, you know, Chief Kerr can't do any, uh, can't can't do any more. He's also the current president of the Illinois Chiefs of Police Association, and and Chief, that that's something that um, is, has got to also be a, a, a I would think, a quite a responsibility because that's that's a pretty huge organization. Talk about your role as the president of the association, and 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 talk a little bit about the association itself and what it does. Sure. Actually, I'll be the president in oh, April, April 21st. I'm jumping the gun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to be president. And I'll get installed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's been a wonderful uh, opportunity. Uh, I've been involved with the Illinois Chiefs uh, about as long as I've been a police chief when I first became a member. And uh, uh, there were some of, the, some of the leadership at that time uh, were wonderful mentors and, and took me in and uh, got me involved in the executive board and, and some of our committees and and. I was appointed a committee chair and then just uh, started to work my way through the board of officers to, uh, to eventually now become the president. Uh, the Illinois Chiefs, we really uh, position ourselves to be the voice of professional law enforcement in Illinois. We do a significant amount of legislative advocacy down in Springfield. And of course, right now, while it's in session, we're pretty busy. Uh, the, uh, there's been a lot of bills over the last couple of years. Uh, some of what we've had to do has been a little more defensive than offensive because of uh, uh, some of the challenges uh, nationally that the law enforcement have had, which have uh, uh, unfortunately precipitated some bills to come out that maybe uh, folks had good intentions but uh, didn't understand some of the negative repercussions that could occur from it. And uh, we're there to help educate uh, our legislators, and they're, they're very receptive and, uh, and I think hold us in high esteem, which is, which is nice. That, along with uh, as a professional as a professional association or organization, we do a lot for uh, executive development and recognition. Uh, we have a certification program for police chiefs and a and also a, a state uh, accreditation program for law enforcement agencies. So we want to hold ourselves up to that high standard and hold our membership up to that high standard, and that's uh, that's what they expect. So uh, I think that. Uh, being part of this association has been a wonderful thing for me personally as well because of the relationships I've been able to make and uh, some of the folks that uh, were my mentors and now I've been in a position to be able to mentor some uh, new chiefs or up-and-coming chiefs as well. And I think that's what uh, that's the difference with a profession and I think what uh, helps us. And I know that the Illinois Chiefs of Police annual conference is coming up here in a, I think in a couple of weeks. Talk a little bit about that because that's going to be held in your in your town there in Oak Brook, Illinois. Yeah, one of the uh, the very nice, uh, if you want to call it a perk of uh, becoming the president, is you get to bring the the state conference to your community. So we're very excited about that. The conference is going to be April nineteenth through the twenty first, and it will be held at the Hyatt Lodge, right at the McDonald's campus, and we'll actually be par- using part of Hamburger University for some of our training sessions as well. So besides our organizational meetings that we'll have of our executive board and of, and of our general membership. Uh, we'll have uh, an all-day training seminar on the Thursday that I'm very excited about uh, bringing in Colonel Lee Ellis, uh, who was a, uh, a Air Force pilot that was shot down over Hanoi in, uh, during the Vietnam uh, War and was actually a prisoner of war at the Hanoi Hilton when uh, Senator McCain was there. Mm. And uh, he's got some tremendous leadership uh, principles that uh, he lives by and, and goes around the country t- talking about. And I think uh, he's going to be uh, terrific for our membership. And then uh, along with that, we'll have more training on on the Friday and then eventually then Friday evening, then will be our installation uh, banquet. Yeah, it sounds like a, a great conference. It sounds like a great speaker. And, you know, the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy will be there as, as, as a vendor. So I'm going to have to maybe try to sneak in to hear, hear that because that sounds like a great presentation. It really will be. And we appreciate your support too. Absolutely. So Chief, I got to ask you, you know, with all the media attention and, and over the past couple of years, you know, there's been negativity toward police. 
Um, what do you want people to know about police officers from your perspective? What, 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 do, what does the public need to know or anybody that has questions about police officers? Well, one of the things, and, and it's kind of interesting what we found out because actually uh, the Illinois chiefs uh, uh, worked with uh, the state a little bit, uh, one of the universities, to do a survey and really to find out that support for local support for law enforcement is uh, extremely high. But it's this national picture, as we've seen some of these incidents that have occurred nationally. And so I think uh, we're, we're seeing a, a, a more support, I think, than what uh, some uh, segments of the media would like to portray. And uh, I think a, a lot of uh, the people know that, that we're out there trying to do the job and have uh, uh, tremendously good intentions of doing the right thing. Uh, police officers aren't perfect, and uh, and occasionally there are errors, but we hold ourselves accountable and want to hold ourselves accountable to the community. And uh, and I think uh, just uh, ensuring that trust. One of the things, and, and I'm uh, very excited about what we've done in DuPage County and what I want to do, and I'm going to actually announce at our conference uh, that I want to do on a state level is is diversity outreach. Uh, we've done, uh, it's been a, a wonderful opportunity here in DuPage County where we've worked with a group called uh, Unity Partnership in DuPage uh, that brings together the African American community, the Hispanic community, the Muslim community, and the Sikh community, and uh, works with law enforcement to get to know each other, uh, uh, develop relationships, and also have uh, uh, training seminars as well. And some of those folks, along with some uh, folks from the NAACP, will be at our conference, at our state conference. Uh, this month as well. So uh, I think it was just maybe breaking down some of the, uh, uh, maybe the communication breakdown and, and getting past that about that, uh, you know, what we found is that uh, really uh, when we sit down and talk about it, 95% uh, or better uh, is this, we want the same things. And, uh, and I think uh, just dispelling some of those, uh, those myths, I think have been uh, very crucial for us. I think that it's a tremendous uh, opportunity, you know, in, in, in law enforcement. Obviously, it's a, you know, my, my background is law enforcement. It's a, it's a wonderful profession. You know, it's one of the jobs where officers get up in the morning, they, they go into job, they go into work, and they, they want to do good things. They want to help people. I mean, it, that's a very noble profession, um, you know, when, when they put their lives on the line every day. So when you think about that, you know, what other occupations are, are even similar to that? You know, there's not, there's hardly none that I can think of. No, and I think, you know, this is, I, I always say this is uh, one of the most honorable professions there are, and really because it is a calling, yeah. uh, you know, and, and that, uh, that uh, I would say is even uh, biblically based on, on where, we, where we get our authority from. And I think if the more people see that and, you know, just see, see it in the eyes of, uh, of, the, of those 50 uh, young men and women that are right across the parking lot mm -hmm. from the studio uh, uh, starting, launching their career as they uh, start the academy and see, you know, why they're there and for the right reasons. And, uh, and I think uh, I think would uh, cause people to be uh, uh, very uh, happy with where we're going. Yeah, and, you know, I, I tell people all the time, Chief, that when these uh, recruits graduate, um, here at the Mac Center at, at the uh, College of DuPage, you know, you, you won't find a better ceremony than that. I mean, it, it's just so joyful to watch them. They come here as recruits and they walk across the stage as police officers with their family and friends. They're supporting them. I mean, it, it, it's quite an experience. And, and if, if people have not been to a police academy graduation, I tell people you, you need to go because mm -hmm. when you will see that, you'll know exactly what um, police officers are all about. Right. I, I love I always enjoy it, even if we don't have somebody in the academy this past year as I had served as uh, president of the DuPage Chiefs and be able to come here and give out a couple of the class awards have been uh, just been a wonderful opportunity. And uh, and I've enjoyed it immensely. Chief, one final question uh, before we, we end here. Um, it's been great. We've covered, covered a lot of information, but let's, let, let me throw out there that what, what do you think people should know about Oak Brook, the, the, the town of Oak Brook, if they have not visited the town before? I can't imagine somebody not visiting Oak Brook, but if they haven't visited Oak Brook, Oak Brook before, what would you like people to know about Oak Brook? Well, I think, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, is just wonderful, and I think, you know, obviously, all the, the folks that live there know it, but uh, the amount of uh, green space that we have and uh, opportunities for recreation and uh, 
So it's not just all the the tall office buildings and the in the mall and the and the concrete parking lots. There's a a huge amount of uh, of uh, recreational space. Uh, you know, besides our golf courses and having our our bath and tennis club, and also the park district maintains tennis courts and and a pool facility as well. So it's uh, it's it's a great place uh, to raise a family. Uh, the, the community has really been pushing to get more young families to move in. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, so the schools are, uh, are rated some of the highest in the state and it's, uh, taxes are very low. So it's, you know, besides having just about any kind of restaurant you want to, to come visit, uh, uh, it's also, a, you know, a wonderful place and the location couldn't be, couldn't be better. That is uh, police chief Jim Kruger of the Oak Brook police department. Chief, I want to thank you so much for coming on the uh, HSTI podcast, and it's it's always great to see you. It's always great for having a conversation, and thank you for your support of the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it, Tom. Thank you, Chief. And so this is going to be the end of the show for this week, but I want to make sure that people can go to our our website to uh, look up uh, different episodes and different podcasts. They can go to www.cod.edu backslash HSTI, the Homeland Security Training Institute. Go to the uh, our website and uh, our homepage there, and you can listen to past podcasts. So thank you for listening. Until next time, this is Tom Brady. For everyone listening, stay safe. <laughs>